Now this video is for those of you who may be new to this. I have an old Gilson, that's G-I-L-S-O-N, snowblower. And to change the oil, we have this plug on the bottom of the engine, one on this side, one on the other. It's 3 8 It's a little awkward because when you drain the oil on this, it has a tendency to leak all over. So to avoid the mess, I cut out this piece of cardboard to help funnel this oil down into the container. And I also have some cardboard on the ground, so if anything should spill, the cardboard will soak it up. Okay, so here we go. This oil wasn't changed since last year. Normally I do it right after the season, I put it away clean. And you do want to heat the engine up before you drain the oil. I cleaned out the driveway a little with it, just to get it hot enough. And here we go, you want to watch out, this oil is hot. And by the way, having a pair of gloves on wouldn't hurt either. This oil was way past its time to change. Now this oil does have a little gray matter in it. So something's wearing on the inside. The bulk of it's out now. As you can see, even with that cardboard helping to catch the oil, some still drip down. So you do want something on the bottom, like I have over here. I put this other cardboard down there to absorb that oil that does drip. Anything will work. Rags, cardboard, combination. If you do get it on the ground, cat litter works to help so uh, soak it up or uh, sawdust. That works a little bit better if you're doing it indoors on a concrete slab. If you have an owner's manual, and if not, if you could go online, you could get the specs on how much oil should go into your engine and the particular oil that you should be using. Each machine will be slightly different. In this case, I can't find any specs on it. If you can't find the specifications on the amount of oil that you should put in, because you don't want to overfill this either, do what I did the first time. Check your dipstick to see if it had the right level before you drain it. Once you drain it, put it into an empty oil container and then should measure what's there. Now the little bit that dripped over here isn't much. And unless you had a major oil spill, you should be able to get the right reading. And if not, you could just add it a little at a time and just keep checking the uh, dipstick to see when you get to the right level. This came with a plug instead of uh, some kind of a spout when they made this. I don't know. I don't know if it was an oversight or whatever the case may be. To help remedy this, I'm going to add this nipple with a nut at the end of it. And to install that, I'm going to use some Teflon tape on the thread going into the engine. You need a wrench for this nut and a pipe wrench or a pair of vice grips to tighten this into the engine and to hold it when you tighten this nut. You want to be careful when putting this in. This nipple is steel. The engine is aluminum. You don't want to over tighten it and strip it. So I'm going to install this nipple now, and then I'm going to fill the engine with oil. This nipple I happen to reclaim off an old snowblower that was at the dump that someone threw out. And I just realized now it's bent on this end. So I put the better end into the engine. Okay, we just want to snug a little bit. We don't want to over tighten it. That should be enough. Now I'll put the cap on. I'm going to put this on without the uh, Teflon tape. It shouldn't need it. Now when you're putting this on and you're tightening this nut, you want to hold the wrench 
so you don't tighten that nipple any tighter into the block. Again, the nipple is steel, the block is aluminum. You'll strip out those threads, and then you'll have another mess to deal with. Okay. I just give it. Takes care of that. Now to take it off. Now I'm going to take it off the block. Fill it with oil. As soon as I fill this up, I'll be back. I demonstrated that this isn't a big job to do. Anybody could change their own oil. It is very important to do it. It's critical that you change the oil on these machines. This machine is a 1985 or older. I don't know how it was taken care of before I received it. Uh, I got it as a pick and I've used it now for the last four years. My driveway is 300 feet long. This machine does get used. You can see from the side over here I have gravel and it pushed out the side. Uh, this was going to be a summer touch up for me and I just never got to it. What I do want to point out is two things. One, make sure you take your oil don't dump it in the garbage. Don't definitely don't dump it down the sewer. Bring it to your local auto zone or whatever shop you might have around. Most of them take oil back to recycle. There's no charge for it and you're helping with the environment. And another is make sure you drain your gas at the end of every season. I kept a little bit of gas in the unit because I was going to work on the oil and do some other repairs on it. I did run it out of the carburetor, but I left some inside of the tank. To get it out of the tank completely, I had to take the tank off and blow it out. But this is what the gas looks like. I don't know if we have a clear shot of this. You can see the sediment in there. Now before, I'm not sure if you can see this all. See all that sediment on the bottom? Before I started this machine this year, I drained this tank. I put fresh gas in it, and it started on the first pull, the very first pull. I thought I was going to have to do a little carburetor work. It was uh, missing a little last year, but we have a snowstorm coming within a day. They're predicting over a foot. It ran fine, cleaning up the little bit of snow I had in the driveway now. So I'm not going to mess with that carburetor at this point. But again, this is what you're looking at when you leave gas in there. Very important to drain your gas at the end of the year. And I hope this video helps, and if you find it uh, useful, entertaining, you know, give us a thumbs up, pass it along, and subscribe. Have a good day, stay safe and warm. Until next time.